Ever since it was first announced, the 2015 Fox Studios reboot of The Fantastic Four, helmed by director Josh Trank, has been mired in controversy and production problems. The barrage of rumors has been so constant that it almost requires a full-time job to keep track of it all. We're going to cut through the noise and give you the story behind the story of Josh Trank's Fantastic Four, including the importance of the comics, the earlier Fantastic Four movies, the relationship between Fox and Marvel, the production of this movie, the rumors surrounding Josh Trank, the rumored Fantastic Four X-Men crossover, and other controversies season marketing. In November of 1961, the first issue of the Fantastic Four hit newsstands. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, the comic was different from any other of the time in that it featured a superhero team whose member identities were publicly known, who would bicker and have their dysfunctionalities, and yet still function together as a team. The comic was a huge hit, and over the next few years, it would wind up leading to the creation of the entire Marvel Universe. In addition to the comic appearances of Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four would also appear in multiple cartoons and video games throughout the years. In the early 1980s, the idea of a Fantastic Four film first started gaining traction. Bernd Eichinger of Constantin Film acquired the option for film rights in 1986. However, he wasn't able to partner up with a bigger production company and distributor due to budget concerns. So rather than allowing the rights to revert to Marvel towards the end of 1992, he partnered up with Roger Corman to make a low-budget Fantastic Four movie, purely as a rights retainer in order to fulfill the contractual obligations for renewal. Production on the Roger Corman-produced and Ole Sassone-directed Fantastic Four started on December 28, 1992 only three days before the rights were set to revert to Marvel. Legend has it the movie was never intended for release, and fearing that it would cheapen the brand, Avi Arad, the man who signed away the movie rights for X-Men and Fantastic Four to Fox, later bought the movie and had all prints destroyed. To this day, it only exists in low-quality bootlegs. After the X-Men and Spider-Man franchises had proven Marvel properties could be box office gold in the early 2000s, Fox Studios released the Tim Story-directed Fantastic Four on July 8, 2005. The movie was a financial hit, grossing $330 million worldwide and on a budget of $100 million, but it was largely negatively received by fans and critics alike. The sequel, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, was released on June 15, 2007. It received an equally as mixed reception as its predecessor by critics and fans, but grossing only $289 million on a $130 million budget. Fox considered it a financial disappointment. This left both the planned Fantastic Four 3 and the Silver Surfer standalone spin-off in limbo, but Fox would have to act sooner or later as their option on the Fantastic Four movies would expire and revert back to Marvel unless a new Fantastic Four movie was put in production within a specified time frame after the release of Rise of the Silver Surfer. While Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer was still in production, the comic book publisher Marvel, who up until that point had only a peripheral role in production of the movies based on their properties, formed their own production company, Marvel Studios. During this time, the already strained relationship between Marvel and Fox took a turn for the worse, with Marvel now denying Fox access to additional characters that Fox had wanted. This is why Fox had to rewrite Andre Brower's Rise of the Silver Surfer character, originally intended to be Nick Fury, into General Hager. Marvel had their own plans for Nick Fury. Marvel Studios launched themselves with the release of Iron Man in the summer of 2008. The movie was a blockbuster hit, grossing nearly $600 million worldwide on a budget of $140 million. The post credit stinger of Iron Man heralded the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which has the potential to feature any and all characters from the Marvel comics, with the exception of those whose movie rights were tied up elsewhere. Seeing the potential this represented long before the Marvel Cinematic Universe would become the game changer it now is regarded as, the Walt Disney Empire announced it would buy Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion on August 31st, 2009, with the intention to put Marvel's library of more than 5,000 characters to work on its television channels and in video games, theme parks, and movies. The move seemed risky at the time, but has since proven to be one of the best deals both Marvel and Disney ever made. On August 31, 2009, the same day that Walt Disney announced the Marvel acquisition, Fox made it clear they had no intention of allowing any of the properties under their control to revert back to Disney. Fox announced a reboot of the Fantastic Four to be produced by Akiva Goldsman and released on an unspecified future date to be decided. There would be no further outwardly signs of progression for years to come as Fox had little desire to actually make another Fantastic Four movie. However, no Fox exec wants to be the one who allowed the Fantastic Four to revert to corporate enemy Marvel Studios. If Marvel were to turn it into another billion dollar franchise, that would be very embarrassing for Fox, and the exec that let it go would be in hot water. As such, Fox won't allow the Fantastic Four rights to revert unless they somehow lose the ability to milk it for more money. 
Insiders told IESB Disney that if Fox ever found themselves in a position where they risked losing a property for failing to have a movie in production in time, they would simply produce a low-budget straight-to-DVD feature and stick it in any theater to fulfill their theatrical release clause. Fox actually wound up finding themselves in just that position in 2012 with Daredevil, but they weren't able to get that into production in time. After Fox declined Marvel's offer to extend the Daredevil option in return for Galactus and the Silver Surfer wholesale, Daredevil reverted to Marvel Studios, who would later make the critically acclaimed fan favorite Daredevil TV series with Netflix. The relationship between Marvel and Fox would become increasingly more toxic after this. Marvel gave ever less exposure to the comics and characters where Fox owned the movie rights, and Fox proceeded with their Fantastic Four reboot. On July 11, 2012, almost three years after Fox had announced their Fantastic Four reboot, Josh Trank was announced as director. Hot off the success of Chronicle, Trank had shown that he could make a profitable movie, on a budget, that clicked with young adult audiences. Later, Josh Trank would also be chosen to direct one of the Star Wars anthology movies, but even with a director attached, production would still move slowly on the Fantastic Four for the next few years, as Fox still had time to spare before the rights reversion deadline. In February of 2013, X-Men First Class director Matthew Vaughn came aboard as producer, and in October of that year, Simon Kinberg came aboard as screenwriter. Josh Trank's friend and earlier collaborator, Michael B. Jordan, was rumored to have been given the role of Johnny Storm shortly after Trank himself came aboard. Jordan was formally announced along with Miles Teller as Reed Richards, Kate Mara as Sue Storm, and Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm, on February 19, 2014, almost five years after the movie was first announced, and almost two years after Trank signed on as director. Production then kicked off in earnest, and even appeared rushed, as the reversion deadline by then had appeared in sight over the horizon. Unlike other comic book movie adaptations, the Fantastic Four did not have much support to speak of in the fan community. While adaptations of any property will have a few detractors, the Fantastic Four had virtually nothing but detractors. The built-in audience were overwhelmingly in favor of rights reversion to Marvel, with many dismissing the movie as yet another rights retainer, similar to the Roger Corman-produced Fantastic Four film of the 90s. The buzzwords about the movie emanating from Fox were Trank's vision, light chronicle, different, grounded, gritty, dark, realistic, and lo-fi. These made it clear that Fox seemed intent on taking the Fantastic out of Marvel's first family, which rubbed fans the wrong way. Various comments made by the people involved further failed to instill confidence. Fans were outraged. This fan backlash did not sit well with director Josh Trank, who himself took to Twitter to voice his displeasure with the fan base. Interestingly, several Twitter accounts have claimed to belong to Josh Trank, most of which were later confirmed to be fake, such as the one where an imposter engaged in civil discourse with fans. The Twitter handle confirmed to belong to the real Josh Trank had posted snide remarks and pot shots aimed at the fans, including one particularly notorious tweet where the fans were likened to a pictured part of his dog's anatomy. This account disappeared shortly thereafter. On March 14, 2014, weeks before the movie was scheduled to shoot, Fox took down Trank's Twitter account, which coincided with the first published report of behind-the-scenes problems. Bleeding Cool broke the scoop that Fox were looking to dump not just Trank as director, but also his chosen script and cast, and that they were actively reaching out to other directors to take over the movie. Despite Fox issuing a denial to Screen Rush, Bleeding Cool stuck with their scoop. In the middle of this first of many PR nightmares to come, Fox announced the Fantastic Four 2 for a 2017 release, presumably to create the impression that everything was fine and dandy behind the scenes. Bleeding Cool would later state that Fox weren't able to find anyone else willing to take over the movie, so the production eventually went ahead with director Josh Trank and his chosen cast. After principal photography had finished, things seemed unusually quiet, though there was the odd interview or statement from the cast. Interestingly, these snippets only seemed to further anger the fans, such as when Michael B. Jordan claimed that the original outfit by Jack Kirby were cheesy and wouldn't be featured in the movie, or when Kate Mara said the cast had been told not to read any of the comics as the movie wouldn't be based on them anyway. With the built-in audience growing increasingly negative towards the production, and the movie about to be marketed by Fox towards the general movie-going audience with heavy emphasis on the Marvel logo, despite Marvel Studios not having been part of the production, and without the movie having any connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Marvel seemingly saw the need to distance themselves from the production in any way legally open to them, and did so by blowing up the cast in the pages of The Punisher, with a writer giving them plausible deniability on Twitter. The world learned of just how troubled the production on the Fantastic Four had been from the Tiger Droppings forums in November of 2014, 
where locals from the Baton Rouge area where the movie was filmed posted their observations and experiences from the production. These rumors were both supported and further elaborated on in other forums, such as 4chan and Reddit. They told of a director in over his head and out of control, several citing that Josh Trank often did not show up on the set at all, and when he did show up he was either drunk or high as a kite. He was also said to have been verbally abusive towards the crew and cast, most notably towards Kate Mara, who he allegedly brought to tears at one point. Furthermore, he was said to have wrecked the luxury accommodation rented for him, causing a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage, which led to the Fox president, Jim Giannopoulos, having to personally come to Baton Rouge to apologize to the owners. Later, Fox apologists would claim that it was actually Trank's small dogs that had caused the $100,000 worth of damage, which few took seriously. Some claim an extra had to go to rehab after partying with Trank during the production, that both Trank and Miles Teller were high during most of the shoot, and the other reports suggest that since Josh Trank was incapable of directing large parts of the shoot, the movie was ghost-directed by writer and producer Simon Kinberg, personally. On January 15th, 2015, Bleeding Cool reported that Fox Insiders considered Trank's cut of the movie to be a mess, and that it came across as a sequel to the director's previous movie, Chronicle, more than it did a Fantastic Four movie. They further reported that extensive reshoots had been ordered, and that sets were being rebuilt in Louisiana. Other reports added more detail, saying that Fox were unhappy because Trank's director's cut was boring and humorless, so Fox added $20 million to the initial budget of $110 million for the reshoots. Simon Kinberg and Fox's PR department confirmed that they were indeed planning to do three to four days of additional reshoots, but that these were normal pickups. These claims by Fox were rejected by numerous other sites and commentators claiming insider knowledge, who would also add that Trank had stopped picking up the phone, and that the reshoots, lasting several months rather than a couple of days, were ghost-directed by Matthew Vaughn. Furthermore, Matthew Vaughn and Hutch Parker had to be taken away from the first weeks of production on X-Men Apocalypse to help salvage the Fantastic Four. Here's a fun fact, you can tell which footage in the final film is from principal photography and which is from the reshoots by looking at Kate Mara's hair. She is wearing a painfully obvious wig in the reshoots. The first sign that the issues with Josh Trank extended beyond Fantastic Four came to light when Josh Trank was notably absent from the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. Trank himself blamed a bad bout of the flu, but it was later revealed that Disney asked him to sit it out. Then, on Friday, May 1st, 2015, after the markets had closed for the week and the movie world was busy following the performance of Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron, Josh Trank announced he had made the personal decision to drop out of the Star Wars anthology movie he was lined up to direct. As many rumors suggested, and The Hollywood Reporter confirmed and would later stick to, Josh Trank was fired over the numerous production problems on the set of Fantastic Four. Not a single one of Josh Trank's cast or producers from the Fantastic Four offered any kind of public expression of sympathy, support, or well wishes on future endeavors. On the contrary, Simon Kinberg, who was lined up to write the Star Wars anthology movie in question, is rumored to have been more reluctant to work with Trank again, and lobbied with Disney to have Trank removed. The only one who said anything was Max Landis, the screenwriter on Josh Trank's previous movie Chronicle, who simply tweeted karma. There would appear to be some bad blood between Trank and Landis. Jeff Snyder of The Rap tweeted it was hard to feel sympathy with Trank being ousted from Star Wars, as Trank had physically threatened to beat him up for covering and confirming the problems on the set of Fantastic Four. Snyder then asserted that Chronicle owed its success more to the great script by Landis than it did to Trank as a director, and that furthermore, Chronicle also had its share of production problems and had to be salvaged by someone other than Trank in the editing bay. Trank remained silent while all of this went down, but eventually re-emerged on the internet on May 24th, 2015. In his first series of tweets that day, he essentially stated that people shouldn't trust The Hollywood Reporter and other outlets who kept their sources anonymous, and instead should listen to the official statements, i.e. spin, from the various marketing departments. In the next series of tweets that day, he compared comic book legend and prolific Fantastic Four writer John Byrne to Stacey Keach's character from American History X. What made Trank liken Byrne to a neo-Nazi was a comment made by Byrne a year earlier, when Byrne stated that instead of making historically white comic book characters black for the benefit of black actors, essentially offering them table scraps, comic book writers should create original, well-written black characters. Also on the 24th of May, the infamous 4chan incident took place. It started with a poster who had allegedly been working on the special effects for the movie with Otoy. He posted excerpts from the various drafts of the script, stated that Trank was a headache to work under, and had demanded that the thing not be consistent in size, but different from shot to shot depending on what made him look the biggest. The Otoy leaker also stated that the movie's planned and announced 3D version had been scrapped, as the funds allocated to it had instead been spent on the extensive and costly reshoots. Then, suddenly and out of nowhere, a poster claiming to be the real Josh Trank entered the 4chan discussion. This poster would not only confirm everything the Otoy leaker said, but also added more detail in an angry, defensive rant. He said, Was I distant? Yeah. 
I was. If you were on the set of a huge film with Matthew Vaughn and half of Fox breathing down your neck to deliver on a film on a specific date, and to rush through everything, you'd do everything possible. Yeah, I wanted to extend the boundaries. FX supervisor got Otoy to do some good quality work which looked great in the dailies, but not what I wanted. Look, okay, here's what I'm trying to say. If you want your Fantastic Four, and you want the real First Family, if you want Doom, ruler of Latveria, if you want Frank and Val Richards, if you want the Power Cosmic or even the Bombastic Bagman, then yeah, my story isn't for you. I decided instead of playing it safe to go all out to go sci-fi space and body horror because that's been done so few times. This is Earth Fox, not Earth 616. On his producer, Matthew Vaughn, and screenwriter Simon Kinberg, the poster alleged to be Josh Trank said, As a producer, you have guys breathing down your neck to make it. Once you reach that level, as you stop noticing what it takes to make a film, unless it's yours. Like I saw him do Kingsman, and he was super chill, and it was completely different because every night, every rap, it was, How much did you get? Are you behind? Why aren't you doing this? And honestly, I swear, if this shit ends up anywhere, I'm gonna kill you people, but I'm high enough to not give a fuck. Vaughn is great when he's not your boss, and Simon, well, Simon is a d- dick that just wants to hold on to his characters. No matter what like this movie comes out, he gets an extension for another two years automatically. Same with X-Men. Those aren't Vaughn's characters or Brian's. They're like, in his mind, they're his characters. And even then, when he wrote the first draft of the script, it was like it was the first Fantastic Four film all over. It was all grounded, and the only thing there was the teleporter. Then I wanted to do something cosmic, or at least a bit different. But no, it's just weird to deal with someone who thinks he owns these characters and wants to keep them to himself. Honestly, when I did my draft, I removed that X-Men. I told him I wanted the four to be on their own, because honestly, it's almost like telling him, these aren't yours, these are whoever creates the story, and so there's Chronicle Crystals and Nihilus. Commenting on the damage to the rented house, house, the poster alleged to be Josh Trank said, I caused some damage. My dogs didn't do that much. They tore up some carpet, but I'm not leaving my pets away from home while I'm in Batten filming a movie. I drew on the walls the actual damage I don't want to discuss, but a new director on a big set, there's a lot of issues and hazing. Under normal circumstances, a random poster claiming to be the director of an upcoming summer blockbuster would be dismissed as a hoax without anyone anywhere giving it a second thought. However, Fox reacted in a manner which is only expected when actual secrets of an upcoming release are leaked. Every website covering the 4chan incident received cease and desist letters from Fox Legal and were instructed to take down their articles. El Mayimbe, formerly of Latino Review, tweeted, and strongly suggested that the 4chan poster claiming to be Josh Trank was indeed the real Josh Trank. Trank would next speak publicly in an LA Times article on June 4th, 2015. He issued denials on having been fired from Star Wars, on Simon Kinberg having lobbied to have him taken off Star Wars, on there having been any problems on the set of Fantastic Four, and on having wrecked the accommodation rented for him. He also stated that he left Star Wars of his own free will, and that it was the toughest decision he ever had to make. The reason he chose to leave Star Wars was, in essence, because Fantastic Four fans were mean to him. I want to do something original after this because I've lived under public scrutiny, as you've seen, for the last four years of my life, he said. And it's not healthy for me right now, in my life. I want to do something that's below the radar. Matthew Belloni, from The Hollywood Reporter, responded to the LA Times article on Twitter by repeating yet again that Trank was fired from Star Wars, citing the production problems on the Fantastic Four and the $100,000 damage done to Trank's rented accommodation. Trank would speak his mind once again in the LA Times a month later, on July 18th, 2015. This time, he said he not only expected the fan outrage, but that he wanted it. I knew it was going to get ugly, he said, but I think maybe there's a part of me that needs adversity from the rest of the world in order for me to feel motivated, to want to prove people wrong. Trank went on to explain this need for adversity started in his childhood. When I was in middle school and high school, I was over 100 pounds overweight. I had a condition called gynecomastia, I had really big man boobs, and I got a surgery for it. My whole adolescence was hating myself and feeling suicidal. I was made fun of by a lot of other kids in such a way that I didn't feel like I was human. That fueled my desire to want to prove people wrong by just writing things and shooting things and being proactive. I made every single choice knowing that people would question it. And what better reaction than to have people then go see the movie and understand it, and feel like maybe they've learned something about the world to not question the next thing they think is going to be stupid or weird. I think that's my purpose right now in my life. This seemed to contain a self-contradiction between Trank saying he wanted adversity from the fans, made creative choices to get it, and would do it all over again, but then quit Star Wars when he got the exact reaction he said he wanted from Fantastic Four fans. Another bone of contention was Trank stating that you can't keep telling a story the same way over and over again, when in fact, the story of the Fantastic Four hasn't been fully realized on screen even once, and the screen story in Trank's movie, somewhat ironically, seems to be lifted beat for beat from the 2005 Fantastic Four movie directed by Tim Story, a complaint which was also 
also raised by the poster claiming to be Josh Trank in the 4chan incident. In conjunction with Comic-Con, just a few weeks before the movie was due to open, it was announced that the 3D release had indeed been scrapped, confirming what the Otoy leaker said in the 4chan incident months earlier. Trank stated that, I want the viewing experience of Fantastic Four to remain as pure as possible for the audience, which means in 2D, just as we shot the movie. This is a marked contrast to what Simon Kinberg said while the movie was filming. We're definitely imagining the story in 3D as we're making it, and it has powers that are well suited to telling the story in 3D. Not just read, but you have somebody that is on fire, and that's something that can be immersive and scary. The reason to use 3D in this Fantastic Four, I think, is to make the experience feel as immersive as possible, where you feel like you're with the characters looking at themselves and looking at each other with these bizarre powers, and feeling like they're really interacting with you. The Fantastic Four panel at Comic-Con was regarded as a short, uninspired, and highly staged ordeal in which only prearranged questions were asked, only repeating what was already known. The only new piece of information was that Josh Trank himself views the Fantastic Four as a continuation of Chronicle. The only one who had ever made a claim like that before was the poster alleged to be Josh Trank during the 4chan incident. Several writers and producers at Fox have talked about a crossover between the Fantastic Four and X-Men on film over the years, only to backpedal shortly afterwards. Most recently, Brian Singer, director of the X-Men franchise and rumored director for the proverbial Fantastic Four 2, hinted at a future crossover to Yahoo Movies on July 23, 2015, with The Hedge, We'll have to see how the films turn out. To just say that you're going to do it would be a mistake. You have to see how the films evolve before you make that decision to completely commit to that. This hedge makes it clear we shouldn't expect any crossover just yet. While Fox holds the movie rights to both the X-Men and Fantastic Four franchises, they belong to two different sets of contracts made at different times and with different conditions. Neither contract explicitly allows, nor forbids, a crossover between the two, leaving it a gray area. It's thought, though, that an addendum to both contracts must be signed off on by the ultimate owner, Marvel, before production of a crossover can commence. If Fox were to conclusively announce a crossover without Marvel's prior written consent, Marvel would have grounds for legal action. In such a lawsuit, Fox would risk forfeiting both the X-Men and Fantastic Four rights. As such, any crossover talk is likely just part of the marketing campaign, aimed at getting X-Men fans still on the fence to see Fantastic Four. Additional controversy has surrounded the casting of Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm. While it's certainly possible that there are imbecilic racist motivations behind some of the complaints regarding his casting, Fox and the movie's defenders early on dismissed other unrelated and legit grievances as racism as well. Many fans have issues with the casting well beyond Jordan, because no matter how talented the actors could be, they still arguably remain unsuitable for the characters they're portraying. Other questionable creative changes include those to the character The Thing, now apparently a eunuch, and Doom, who yet again is a metal man shooting electricity, while the fan-favorite villain from the comics remains exclusive to the comics. Regarding the comics, after the marketing line of the film being a new take failed with fans, Fox Marketing started saying the movie was inspired by the Ultimate Fantastic Four, an imprint not held in high regard by most fans. Fox's response to both the rumored and confirmed production problems has for the most part been to deny everything. Only when Trank was fired from Star Wars did they admit there had been some bumps in the road. The cast have been noticeably quiet and reluctant to talk about the movie. Josh Trank himself has been notably absent from a large part of the movie's promotion, leaving writer and rumored ghost director Simon Kinberg to do many of the interviews that the director normally would. Even so, both Kinberg, Vaughn, and everyone else involved have all made it very clear in every article and interview that the movie is Josh Trank's vision and no one else's. So much emphasis is placed on Trank's vision that they seem to be distancing themselves from the film. If the film fails, everyone else can wash their hands and say they were only being supportive of the director, whose vision did not quite work. The usual array of trailers posters, and TV spots have been released, albeit the promotional campaign started far later than one would expect for a tentpole release such as this. Other than restaurant tie-ins, such as with Denny's, there will be no merchandising, as Marvel controls all Fantastic Four merchandise and have decided against releasing any. At this time, the movie has not yet been released, but time will certainly tell what the fate of the Fantastic Four will be. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch all of our upcoming videos. For more podcasts, news, and reviews, check us out at MidnightsEdge.net and follow us on Twitter at Midnight's Edge. Also check out our Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash Midnight's Edge.